Bleach stands out amongst its shonen contemporaries for its diverse cast and array of strong female characters, whether that be Unohana, Rukia, or Yoroichi. Though some of these have been given attention, one that has flown under the radar, especially for new viewers, is Tatsuki Arasawa, the resident Karakura Town tomboy. Introduced early on in the series as Ichigo's oldest childhood friend and Orihime's best friend, she was notably cool-headed but fierce and protective of her friends when provoked. Though as the story left the human world, she basically vanished, and as of where the story is now, she's played a relatively minor part. Despite this, people have grown fond of her and what she is or what could have been. Early Bleach had a certain charisma to it that enticed a lot of people to give it a try. Everything from the art style to the first anime opening just hit a little different. While Kubo has grown and developed into a truly exceptional artist, there's something about these rougher punk drawings. On the surface, Tatsuki is a character that fits well into the general vibe and aesthetic of the early series. Besides Rukia, she was the female character that really stood out to me. While she is a feminist character in the sense that she would probably kick your ass before explaining why what you did was stupid, her personality doesn't start or stop there. Most of the time she is notably more mature and cool-headed than her contemporaries, and only matches the energy to threats or comments at the expense of her friends. Even at an early age, she was shown to be a perceptive and caring person. She first met Ichigo at the age of four at the dojo they would train in as children. Any time they sparred, it would result in Ichigo crying, though she noticed whenever his mother would come, the tears would dry up and he'd be back smiling. Their friendship grew from there, with Ichigo referring to Tatsuki affectionately as Tatsuki-chan. That changed, though, when Ichigo's mother passed away at the age of nine. Tatsuki picked up on Ichigo skipping school and this prompted her to go looking for him. When she found him, he would sit alone by the riverbank from the morning until the night, with her thinking that he was waiting for his mother to return. As the two grew apart, this weighed heavily on her, leaving her to truly feel terrible for what he was going through. In chapter 18, in a conversation with Orihime, she details how hard it was to even look at him during this time. While Tatsuki always appeared to be receptive and a little bit ahead of her peers, this probably just reaffirmed those traits for her. She'd go and visit Ichigo and the two would have pleasant interactions. In chapter 19, when Ichigo is looking at the grave of his mother, the thought that is recalled is one where both her and Ichigo are scuffed up. As she overlooks the riverbank, she asks him whether or not he can see ghosts as other kids have started a rumor about it and tease him for it. While Tatsuki is perceptive, and later in the series she's even suspective of the ongoing distance of Ichigo, she takes him at face value and trusts in her friend. Sitting down next to him to detail about those talking bad about him and how angry it made her, prompting a laugh out of the young Ichigo. Chapter 25.2 comes shortly after a lot of this backstory is given, and isn't something a lot of people have gotten the chance to read. Titled Things Like Loneliness, it takes a deviation from the main story to show us June 18th. The day after, Ichigo confronted the hollow that killed his mother on the anniversary of her death. With the panel starting from Tatsuki's POV, you see the back of Ichigo's head and an accompanying message of I knew you'd be here. This time, only Ichigo is scuffed up from the previous fight with the Hollow and has understandably skipped two days of school in a row. Always being thoughtful with friends, this brought Tatsuki, who is well known for being a good student, to take a leave of absence herself to go and look for him. She stares him in the face before looking away, thinking about how the new Ichigo has become so distant and caught up in matters beyond the human. Every time things like this happen, I will be reminded of the summer of 5th grade. It was when my nickname changed from Tatsuki-chan to Tatsuki. I couldn't really tell, but that feeling was probably the closest to loneliness. The two had grown apart, and at this point, even early on in the story, it seemed like the distance was truly worlds apart. Ichigo had finally defeated her in judo and never did another match again. He'd grown taller and larger than her year to year. There was a void in the friendship between the two, and as perceptive as ever, Tatsuki felt as if it just grown deeper. Despite this, she had always been there for Ichigo and would drop whatever she is doing to go and check up on him. Later on in the short chapter, she says, but I am not interested in how this feeling resembles loneliness. 
and proceeds to get up and strengthen her resolve, playfully hitting him before telling him to go to the arcade with him. While Ichigo was struggling, her residual pain seeped into Tatsuki over the years. Her masculine inclinations and action-oriented approach to things hadn't seemed to close any of the gaps between the two. However, her deep empathy and emotional intelligence led them to have a unique relationship that was never relegated again in the series. Though her more tomboyish desires for competition and the like haven't been fulfilled, it's her problem-solving attitude that leads her to simply know that getting Ichigo out of his own head was exactly what he needed. Taikubo himself says, Childhood friends, infinitely far, yet a close existence. Tatsuki has a mixed feeling on the very next day that Ichigo fought Grand Fisher. It's a sad feeling when friends grow apart the older you get, but Tatsuki has found a way to check up on Ichigo after all those years, and she knows in the back of her head that through her care for him that if she ever needed him, he would be there for her. While Ichigo had grown apart with Tatsuki by middle school, she had met Orihime and had somewhere else to put her protective energy. Throughout the series, you can see Tatsuki being the knight in shining armor, so to speak for her. Whether that be keeping Chizuru away from her, or attempting to protect her from a numb chandelier. While everyone else is caught up in their own business, Tatsuki is there for her, rushing to the scene. Even as Tatsuki has been tortured and about to be killed, the priority on her mind, as she looks onto Orihime, is the desire for her to stop crying. The pleading for her to stop crying as she falls to the ground shows you how strong the resolve Tatsuki has is. While she has her own desires and awaited fulfillment, she leans back into those feelings she had for Ichigo all those years ago, except this time for a seemingly helpless Orihime. Afterwards, as she is healed and Orihime is heading off to the Soul Society, she accepts the strength of her friend, as she has with Ichigo and refers to her as the second strongest girl in all of Japan, taking her at her worth and just wishing for her to come back okay. While on the surface, Orihime's initial affection for Ichigo perplexes Tatsuki, it's clearly not out of a place of malice or spite. Tatsuki understands what Ichigo is dealing with and what Orihime has come from in her past and at a young age is trying to balance the complex issues of those two possibly interacting. When Kom takes over Ichigo's body and approaches Orihime, rather carelessly, Tatsuki steps in pulling him away. I personally don't think Tatsuki would think Ichigo would behave like this, as when Orihime addresses the issue, saying that despite it looking like Ichigo, it wasn't actually him, leaving her particularly hurt and disturbed. So when it does appear to happen, she has an over-the-top response, having those unfortunate thoughts she discards seem to have come true. It takes something truly absurd and traumatizing for Tatsuki to blow up. While there is still more to discuss, I think it is fair to establish that Tatsuki has had a strong story arc at the start of the series and has a well-rounded personality, with her own ambitions as well as keeping her heart in line with her friends. While she has her flaws when confronted with evidence, her problem-solving nature leads her to side with reality, and albeit begrudgingly accepted. She knows at the point of entering the Soul Society, or if you make it take care of herself, better than she could, and along with Ichigo chatting with Uryu, they would return. As the story progresses from here, it obviously leaves its humble urban fantasy roots, a fighting ghost in Karakura town, and expands the world to a much larger scope, leaving Tatsuki behind only to appear in glimpses of the overarching narrative. During the first invasion of the Arankar arc, we're introduced to Tatsuki again, who has a meeting with Yami Lark. Yami uses his ability Don's Weed, sucking up the human souls nearby. Tatsuki, however, remains steadfast after surviving the attack and is even able to see the Espada. It's hinted through the interaction with the Espada and her that there is some development of possible powers and spiritual growth. Later on, using her recent ability, she is seen looking onto Ichigo with a familiar worried expression as he is fighting Grimjin. In the midst of all this, Orihime is taken to wake a wound. The ever-observant Tatsuki picks up on this and rushes to confront Ichigo at school as he is leaving. Despite her physical training and ability, she's out of breath, and in the single scene we finally see Tatsuki lose her mood. She can see what Ichigo is dealing with, and who he is fighting this time. Knowing the danger that is present, the fact that she can't find Orihime, 
brings her to a point of distraught. While the cone situation was absurd and forced the over-the-top reaction for her, she knows that this is the Ichigo she has grown up with since she was a child, and as she confronts him with the evidence of this, he simply brushes her aside, clutching him through the glass, causing his head to bleed, venting all the frustration over the years of Ichigo attempting to shoulder all this by himself and growing ever distant. Sort of similar to Ichigo's breakdown during the full brink arc, when he's confronted with his helplessness, she hits her lowest point. Despite this, as she is getting her hands taped up by Mizuru, just a little bit later in the day she is receptive to him grounding her back to reality. The frustration she lets out being a momentary low in her resolve pushing her through to see where Ichigo is going. Having those initial feelings of work, he may negatively interacting with Ichigo come true and knowing that he isn't by her side, it's impossible for her to balance it as it's far beyond her hands at this point. Urahara reaffirms what she knows is going on inside Ichigo as this is happening. It doesn't seem to placate her feelings. An entire two arcs later, the next time we see her is in Karakura Town confronting Aizen of all people. Having made an impression on Aizen at least enough for him to remember her, noting that he has seen her through Giora's eyes during the original Yami confrontation. There is not too much here besides the possible further development of potential powers for her as she merely falls to her knees and retains some agency even as Aizen gets closer when she was practically soul crushed as Obeisiyami looked her down. Eventually, she's saved by Rongiku and Don Kanoji and there's a somewhat interesting pen in this short interaction. She remarks how beautiful Rongiku is, saying, Damn that Ichigo, I never heard anything about him doing a babe like that. This has led to some speculation as to what this means, and while in my own head canon, I like to just make her a lesbian, I don't think that's the case. It's more than likely that the association she sees in the wrong geek movie she goes out in, that it recalls her distraught feelings referenced earlier in their interaction at the school. The fact that Ichigo has these powerful friends who want to fight for him and even protect Natsuki that she has never even seen or heard of, leaving her distant once again. While she has further appearances in the Fulbring arc, where a lot of people thought she should have had a more pivotal role in even the currently being aired Thousand Year Blood War arc, these I don't think are particularly worth analyzing or going through because it sort of just hammers on the same things discussed earlier. Post time skip, Natsuki has blossomed along with her contemporaries and doesn't exhibit the same issues of loneliness or her character flaws. The two main discussions at this point would be one, should the soul tickets handed to her and Ichigo's friends in Karakuritan have culminated in something and if so, what should it have been? And two, should she have been more involved in the full brink arc? And if so, should she have had her powers developed during this arc as a full bringer or play a different role? Discussion one I don't care as much about because while it is a good scene and an interesting choice by recently appointed head captain Shunsui, it sort of just ends up being a nod to the fact that their well-being is, is still in his mind or heart. It can indicate that something is going to happen in the future, and especially with the returning faces of all stripes in the Thousand Year Blood War, it's easy to see why people wanted something more to materialize. I think it's okay that it didn't. While I love Kotsky and wouldn't mind even just a little scene of them at some point in the arc, I don't consider it a failure or anything that it didn't happen. Discussion 2 is a lot more interesting in the sense that as her backstory is Ichigo's childhood friend, and that burden he places on himself being challenged for the first time and even breaking him there, there's definitely a deeper role Totsuki could have played. You could go the route of her getting involved with that somehow, even serving as a minor role to help pull Ichigo out of the despair or struggle, or the frequently remarked upon route of her continuously developing talents. I would prefer the former to the latter, but the absence of either left a small sore spot for me at the time of it aired. While we at least get something in the Aron card and fake card for a town arts, we basically get completely nothing following. Though we don't get much exploration through Tatsuki herself in the grand scheme of things, we get this through her relationships with others. She is the childhood friend of the man who saved the world, and the best friend of his wife, and was always there for them. The original strong friend of the strong friend 
who no one really checked up on. The story passes up her role, and I suppose it's sort of natural that as it progresses, she stays human, and connected to Orihime and Ichigo to that extent. Even when Ichigo is confronting his burdens in despair for the first time, Tatsuki isn't there. After pushing her away for so long and trying to handle everything himself, it's sort of fitting that the through line from where his mother passed away to Aizen's defeat wasn't involved at all. While you could get caught up thinking about the missed opportunities and possible roles Tatsuki could have filmed, I think you could end up playing with the monkey's paw. I read a comment or two discussing how Tatsuki would have just filled a role similar but less important to Rukia had she stayed a mainstay throughout the series, and with my earlier comparison, I understand the vibe of that sentence. Even though the throwaway comment doesn't exactly put forth a strong argument and you can't prove a negative, I think there is value to the idea that the role Tatsuki serves, minor as it may be, is totally fine. Are there mistakes made? Of course, Bleach is a great series with fantastic character writing and more complex motivations than its contemporaries, but it does have its flaws that even the biggest fans of the series are the most passionate to point out. While it's a more positive reading of Tatsuki and how she is originally, I think she is a beautiful, well-rounded, strong female character and another example of even when people think Bleach's writing may fail, it's still pretty damn good. I like to think that in chapter 686, she's exactly where she needs to be. Supporting one of her friends on TV with everyone else, human and non-human alike. 